Okay, everybody, our last best of three series of the day is actually starting up right now. Tomb of the Spider Queen, Denial Esports is playing versus Vox Nihili. Falstad apparently a ban on the side of Denial. Now, Vox Nihili played this map earlier and they snowballed with Sylvanas quite heavily and were able to take it. But now we are in the semi final, and this is a really different game that we have now. Keep in mind that whoever wins this best of three series actually advances to play at the regional final. It's the first qualifier for the second NA regional final, and it's going to be an interesting one. Kefin and his boys for Denial Esports are going up against Vox Nihili here, and this is definitely going to be a really intense match. So they ban Falset out, and there's the Carrigan ban right after that, with the Zagara locked down immediately by Denial Esports, just simply saying, okay, we have that bot lane secured. Vox Nihili is currently looking at this and they're saying, like, okay, listen up, with the Zagara running the bot lane, we need someone to really deal with her. We need a solo lane that is strong enough to keep Zagara at bay, and that's why Thrall is currently one of the heroes that they are really considering in this setup. And it's something that they have done in previous games as well, looking at that Thrall and trying to see if they maybe, like, can use him in this situation. So, at that point, this is going to be pretty interesting to... Uh, they actually switched it over to ETC. Now, if they pick the ETC right now, that could actually bring us into a situation in which they are struggling at that bot lane if they don't secure the Thrall. You have to kind of find a hero that is able to deal with Zagara. Zagara is just simply going to push down the structures, and if their team then gets also like the turn in, you find yourself in a spot where all of a sudden like you're starting to lose a fort since, and not only like the front line of your uh, gate and the two towers. And that can snowball quite heavily. We've seen in previous games already how much it actually means if you get a double turn in, for example, or what happens when you have fallen talent behind. So right now, Vox Nihili relying again on that ETC that already did like solid work for them in the games. So that's already a great start. They can also like try and combo ETC with a lot of heroes like we've seen a bit earlier. Like stun into stun is really fantastic. It's one of the reasons why ETC Kerrigan is so strong. In this case, she's already banned out. But they go for ETC and Rhaegar first of all. Now Rhaegar helps here with the wave clear and wave clear is one of the key elements on Tomb of the Spider Queen. On a lot of the maps, wave clear is incredibly important. It allows you to get vision on the map. It allows you to get like control over the objective, makes it tougher for your opponent to actually engage in and you keep constant pressure in there. It's one of the reasons why Zul for the longest time was, was such an early pick. He has been nerfed since then, but he's still strong. And on this map, <laughs> there he is. On this map, he is still a very solid hero, as is uh, he is already on in Infernal Shrines. So Li Ming, Zul, and Zagara are already picked here. Now Zul can also like act as, of course, one of those front lines that helps out a bit. But just like look at this combo that we are seeing right now. We could even see a thrall ban, by the way, if they want to deny. Uh, simple like a, a solo laner right now if you look at this it's absolutely insane we have Zagara at the bot lane Zagara is going to dominate the bot lane and Zulu is going to rotate between mid and top together with the rest of the team so that's already pressure on all of the lanes it's one of the reasons why Vox Nihili bans out Johanna because they're simply saying listen with everything they have right now if they get another wave clear tank we have a problem that's also where Leoric could theoretically come into play. The problem that Denial Esports has if they are going into Leoric is that they all of a sudden have him as a solo tank. They can play that together with that Zul, by the way. On this map, you can actually pull that off. And there's the Thrall ban. So already pressure at the bot lane because you have a problem going up against Zagara. Greymane is still up and could be taken for Vox and Healy, And I'm actually pretty sure that they're going, oh, uh, potentially into Greymane. But they are looking at a Lunara for now. So Lunara taking any Kel'thas. All right, Kel'thas is going to allow them to get a bit more wave clear in. But it's also go two very squishy heroes in the back. So they have wave clear here. That helps. They have stuns on ETC. They have Kel'thas with a gravity lapse. That's not too bad either. With Lunara, they already put pressure onto the healer for now at least. Because you need someone who can actually like have a bit of AoE heal in. Uther, for example, can struggle against Lunara, especially in the later stages if you rely on him. Muradin about to be taken. Okay, against the setup, they need someone who has a bit more sustain here. So he's definitely not in a bad spot. I'm very curious to see what the healer is going to be. In Europe, I'm 100% certain that we would see a Karazin being dropped now. But North America has very different priorities on uh, the healers, so we actually could see something completely different. There's the Leoric. I've been talking about him a little bit earlier. He has that wave clear, so if you want to have even more wave clear, make sure that your opponent is struggling a lot, he's good. And Tomb could be played with this, because you have Kalthas and Lunara as potential targets, depending on Lunara's heroic ability, of course. They go for Leoric. All right. So uh, that's already... It, it's, it's a good pick. It's not as tanky as a Muradin, 
but at the same time he has more wave clear potential and if they really want to pressure from the get-go they can do a whole lot with this and if Entomb is going to be dropped if Lunara doesn't go into the Leaping Strike then uh, that's definitely going to be a massive massive danger to the entire backline setup the healer on the other hand that's really what matters they go Charism I love it I absolutely love it Charism with the AoE heal has a lot of value here Uther, I don't really see him in this particular setup right now. They need someone that has a bit more heal. There's other options, but I guess if you're looking at solo healer, Charism is your best op uh, best op opportunity right now. Now, Voxni, Healy, what are they going to play for their front line? I really don't think that a triple back line would be the best choice here. And they go Chen. Okay, so Chen for the bot lane. I like that. That's actually like a smart choice. Chen is one of the few heroes that can in this situation still deal with Zagara at the bot lane. He's not going to be part of the rotation. Zagara can't really threaten him too much. So that's really good for them. And later on they can use Chen to barrel and try and get a target like Zul, for example. So Karazim with this is also forced into a cleanse. So he can't go for the Echo of Heaven. It's a smart choice to go for Chen in this setup. And I really like that quite a bit. So, yeah, it's an interesting uh, setup for sure. Denial Esports with a heavy wave pressure, uh, lane pressure, just like wave clear overall that they're trying to use with the rotation. Commit. I like this setup. Buffo, thank you very much for, uh, for the support, my friend. Thank you very much for the sub. And I guess with that, we're going to go into game number one. Tomb of the Spider Queen is the map. Denial Esports against Vox Nihili, boys and girls. Let's get ready and jump in right away. The first game in the last best of three of the day. To the left side of the map, we're having Voxni Healy, and they are currently playing this with Hostia on Lunara, Goat on Kalthas, Deu on ETC, Lex Utha on Rega, and McIntyre playing the Chan for the bot lane against Zagara. To the right side, it's Denial Esports with APM on Charism, King Kefin on Leoric, Glorang on Zul, I Dream on Li Ming, and K1 Pro is playing Zagara. It is the game that decides who goes to the second regional final in North America. This best of three series is going to uh, make it happen. We had the semi-final of the first qualifier. And since two teams out of each tournament will advance to play at the offline finals, the grand final isn't even played. The winner of the semi-final will advance. We have on level one, Convection now taken. It's pretty popular right now to go into a bit of a different Kalthas build. There have of course been some changes recently in one of the patches. So right now a uh, focus on Flame Strike is quite common for Kalthas. We have Zagara going into the Infest again, not going into the Volatile Acid as the level one talent that we're seeing here right now. And at the same time, also now Hopelessness. We see Backlash as a level one talent, Glorang going straight into that very popular talent these days as well and you can see the damage output already i dream is just firing away shots fired the entire time bot lane as expected is zagara versus chen and nice shots against goat Kalthas is already in a bit of trouble and as i said before like the rotation should be won by denial esports they're doing very well here Kefin, on the other hand is being attacked he went hopelessness he did not go into any of his sustained talents just yet. That alone will allow him to put some pressure in. And oh my god, like I Dream is getting so much value out of his shots. Really well done. Rotation is completely dominated by the red team right now. And that allows them to just like pressure this in even more. They have to wait for the wave because they're just like too fast with it. They didn't even have to rely on any kind of bone prison shenanigans to try and get a kill. But they're doing it now. And ETC moved in. Backlash already activated by Glorong. They're trying to see if they can get a kill here. Hosty, by the way, with a decent job on Lunara. Putting a lot of pressure onto those heroes. But also needs to be careful since Li Ming is just firing the entire time. Overall, when we're looking at talents, another one that we have to point out for now is that we have with natural perspective the vision talent for Hosty that's going to make it very easy for them to get some damage in. Oh, there's the pressure against Leoric, but with a bone prison, Lex Uther might fall, barely escapes here. Wow, that was a close call on Rhaegar. If he falls in this situation, that would be a disaster for them. Right now, we're having, on the other hand, also a lot of damage dished out by, uh, by Kel'Thas. It's actually quite impressive to see how far ahead he already is with his quest talent. I mean, if you look at it here, he's already at roughly 50% with the quest talents. So that is currently looking very strong for them. I mean, at this point, we're having, uh, well, down to the bottom of the map, still that battle between K1 Pro and McIntyre. It doesn't really do too much yet for the blue team. They are falling a bit behind since ammunition is being drained. 
But also, we have Hosty, Lex Utha in the mid lane, trying to get that rotation going again. Uh, Dehu even zoning that out. Kefin on the other hand, the only one running in. And that is really the, one of the strengths of like Leori. He can escape out of these situations. He has the wave clear. And that's really helping them. But right now he finds himself in trouble. Gets locked down hard. Pushed back. Body blocked. And Kefin is falling. That was just a bit too much for him to handle. Zul was in the mid lane during all of this. Already pushing another wave back. He went straight into the Death's Reach as the level 4 talent, so not even going for sustained talents on his own. But look at these towers. Thanks to their dominant performance during the rotation, we see they're now completely drained of ammunition. Idream is poking away to the, against them. Up to the top lane, a very similar picture. A bit of ammunition is still left here, but overall, still a very solid move there. Also, Energy Royal now taken with a cooldown reduction. So instead of going for the increased range and speed, we're seeing cooldown reduction here against Heroes. Lockdown again! against ETC and this time Deo seems to be the one falling yep no chance for him down goes ETC Lex Uther also in trouble but able to rescue uh, to save himself behind the gate here Chen on the level 4 talent going into the swift reflexes besides that we're seeing now also again hardened bones taken for the Oregon a little bit of a different style to play the hero compared to what we see in Europe um, but overall Caffeine doing a solid job so far personally I'm really interested to see his level 10 talent Chen taken down at the bot lane. Look at that. That's a lot of gems lost, and that's gems they can't recover. That's a really nice start for the Nile Esports. But yeah, in Europe, we have a bit of a different style here on Leoric, but overall, I'm really interested to see what his level 10 talent is going to be. March of the Black King would give you a bit more sustain in team fights and also the damage output, but at the same time, depending on the talent taken on Lunara on 10, there is a decent chance that with an Entomb, you can actually trap both of the backline heroes. So, uh, there's definitely arguments to be made for both of the choices here. Paralyzing Rage taken over the Ghastly Reach, which is quite common. But like with Paralyzing Rage here, you get a little bit more slow against that front line. Down to the bottom map, on the other hand, we're seeing K1 Pro in trouble as Dehu and McIntyre are jumping in. But the Web Weavers are now moving in and forcing them back. K1 Pro will have to rotate over, and that's what he's doing as we speak. Nearly completed quest talent on the side of Kalthas, by the way. Code has been doing a very good job with his convection on level 1. Went into the Burn Flesh now as the level 7 talent, which is also, of course, a fantastic talent if you are focusing on the Flame Strike build. Splintered Spear taken for Hosty. That's also helping him with a little bit more AoE. Caffeine already pressured a lot. And the first Web Weaver wave didn't really do too much yet, but they got structures. They got a couple of towers. It couldn't really go through one of the forts yet, but they got a bit of value with simply eliminating towers for now. And they still have decent vision also on the map, thanks to K1 Pro, who was dropping creep tumors nearly everywhere. On level 7, we also have besides that the Bile drop taken for Zagara. K1 Pro the bot lane putting pressure in. Li Ming on the other hand falling in the middle of the map. But down here, the pressure play continuing against K1 Pro who went into the Brew Master's balance. Li Ming taken down, that's of course a bit of an issue. I Dream so far has been the main damage dealer for the team and he has been doing exceptionally well. But they need to try and interrupt here. But again, Caffeine completely blocked out and this is starting to become a problem. The power slide, the gravity lapse, and then afterwards the face melt is just a bit too much for him to handle. The Auric is not really the most hit point heavy tank. He can still be bursted down. You see him oftentimes as the second tank in the composition. But he can put quite a bit of pressure in. And of course, thanks to his respawn ability, losing him in these situations is not really the end of the world just yet. But there's the blue web weavers. So we have web weaver waves for both of the teams now. And there is going to be quite a bit of value on the side of Vox Nihili too. But let's see how much they can actually get out of this. Level 7 brought us Ratma's Blessing for Zul. So he let the mana sustain go for now. But he still wants to have a little bit more lane sustain overall. Web Weaver's already there. Caffeine moving away again. The Hardened Bones helping him with the escape here. And this time there was no chance to actually interrupt him in the slide through. Already the mid lane pressure is happening. Both the teams aiming for level 10. And Denial Esports is very close at this point. They are about to hit their 10, and that's going to be an interesting one. Is there going to be an Entomb? Yes, no. Caffeine, what is he going for? Drops the Entomb, tries to go for Day, who's seven sided, is already being used, but not enough value yet. Skeleton Mastery from Glorong, who's trying to go in from the side. Nice cleanse on Goat. He's able to get away for now, is able to escape here, just barely moves out of harm's way. And that level 10 has done a bit of work, but it did really give them a kill. It forced the opponent back and made sure that they were not able to get a lot of value in the mid lane where both of the towers are still standing. Not for long though if you look at the hit points. 
but they are still in a situation in which overall they have a slight lead. 10 versus 10, the leaping strike now chosen, so kind of as expected considering that we have in Tomb on Leoric that allows you to jump out of it, of course. The barrel for good old Chen, and in this case the cleanse is going to be very important. Once that Chen starts to barrel, cleanse has to be absolutely on point in that situation. They're jumping in, there's the cleanse, very well done. Really well played, Moshpit immediately interrupted. Great move by Dream, that was the perfect timing here. And they're going for the kill against ETC. Also dropping another Entomb, trying to zone them out. Bone Prison against Hosty. They're trying to go in, Hopelessness already being used with a Drain Hope. And we're having them just like attempting to go for kill number two. But that was an important one. And they have the camp at the bot lane now as well. But they are starting to strike to move in. Mid lane pressure as well now as we're seeing Caffeine and Glorong starting to move through. They have a decent amount of wave clear between the two of them. And they are using it in the mid lane to pressure the fort even more. Very likely to fall. Yeah, definitely going to fall now. And at the top lane, Leoric is already in position as Glorong is trying to turn in again. So great job on the side of Denial Esports. Three kills against three kills. So Vox Nihili definitely not out of it or anything. They have even a turn in uh, potentially. They need five more gems to complete it. The problem is that Denial Esports is just a bit faster. And they nearly complete it, but not just quite. They have two gems. They need a few more. One wave is all that they need at this point to make it happen. The level 11 versus level 11. There's still the Phoenix that could be dropped in worst case scenario if you really have to. And by the way, talking of course about Kel'Thas, he already completed his level 1 talent. So he has now all that extra damage that he can bring to the table. Again, the turn and attempt on both sides. Down here, McIntyre actually alone. Oh, going for the barrel. Very nice move against Glorung. Already going straight for the backlash here. Great rotation. Day who is in trouble. The ancestral healing is in, but that allows Kel'Thas to be attacked. Kel'Thas is just barely keeping himself alive. It was a great cleanse on him. McIntyre moving away, but that turned against Vox Nihili within a flash. It was insane. It looked like a very nice, like it looked like a really cool move on their part, trying to get the kill against Zul, but then it turned around against them quite easily. Uh, ETC had to be ancestral at the same time. Kalthas was being attacked. Rega was everywhere, dropping that cleanse as well. If not for that, Zul, uh, sorry, Kalthas would have definitely died here. They get the Web Weaver wave now, though, and they have also level 13 and just a second. And once that talent hits, it's not only going to be the Web Weaver wave that is going to give them the edge, but also the level 13 talent is going to be another important asset in their next potential team fight. They're going to push those lanes hard, and with the four at the bot lane already gone and the one in the mid lane also taken down, they are starting to focus to the top, where everybody is just like starting to rotate over. We already have the Crepify taken for Zul. Li Ming going full damage with the glass cannon now. And besides that, we're also seeing protective coding taken for K1 Pro. Over here, they're starting to invade again. McIntyre, yep, there we go. Bad damage against Chen, but not enough just yet. Web Weaver Wave up at the top. They're trying to put some pressure into the mid lane for now. No 13 yet for Vox Nihili. They're trying to work towards it, but they are losing a lot of ground here in this game. At the top lane, the Web Weavers are still pushing. It's not really going to do too much yet, but it will definitely pressure the wall and maybe even take down one of the towers. Yeah, they defend with four, and therefore they're not going to have too much of a problem here. Now keep in mind, we still have the blue team with a potential turning, and they have the level 13 talent right now, so we're talking even talents again. In this case, the Pyromaniac has already been chosen. Cooldown reduction on the side of Kalthas. We're seeing uh, also camps taken on the map by both teams. They are both aiming for the Boozer camp right now. And unfair advantage with all natural perspective taken and the splintered spear. Oftentimes, of course, Nature's Culling is an amazing choice for you, but Nature's Culling was nerfed in the past. Instead of like 200% damage, it does now only 150, and that opens up other opportunities for you. While Vigor is a dominant talent in Europe, but over here the Splintered Spear is going to help you on this map. Glorung again with the approach, going for the Bone Prison here, trying to see if he can maybe lock down a target so that they can jump on it. Enough to share, already taken for Chen. Interesting talent to take. And basically just shows that they are trying to have a little bit more sustain in these team fights. Kel'Thas already isolated. They are attempting to turn it around against Caffeine. The Phoenix is on the ground. And Hosty is pushing I Dream back. So cooldown dropped, but both teams still looking for an opportunity here right now. 
the same time now, Kafin still there, starting to uh, see if he can maybe pressure the front line in particular, slowing them with the paralyzing rage. Kafin gets attacked, moves away immediately, and thanks to the hardened bones, he survives. They're poking. It's all about the poke right now, trying to interrupt the turn in. McIntyre alone with 34 gems. They hold 51. They only need another 16 to get their web weaver wave. And uh, with this, we are still seeing Denial Esports denying that turn in. They don't have enough gems to really make it happen just yet, but they are, of course, attempting to just turn in as many as they possibly can on themselves. Kalthas is deep pushing the top lane, so he needs to move back. That opens up a bit of a position for Denial so that they can actually do that. They move back to the bot lane right away. I dream in K1 Pro. They see Kalthas top, they immediately move down and say like, all right, guys, let's take the camp real quickly, get pressure on the bot lane. That buys more time for us. We can try and get level 16 before they can turn in. But they have to move up to the top, and they are not going to make it happen to interrupt Kelthas. But they are still able to interrupt the rest. Hosty about to fall. Gets healed with the Ancestral. A great play by Rega here. Barely keeping him alive. The barrel is in. Glorong about to fall. Glorong is going to die here. And they are attempting to get a uh, counter kill, and they get it. They get it against Kalthas. It's a one-for-one -one trade, but now as Chen already falls, it's a two-for-one in favor of Denial Esports. They're trying to make it a triple. Lex Uther just barely getting out of there. He's really low on 48% HP, and he needs to be careful. I Dream is always getting that damage in. I mean, look at that damage output on the side of Li Ming. 43,000 here already. Only Nunara with 48k is in a better position. They're not going to go for... They actually, they could have maybe tried to get a turn in. They need a few more gems to make it happen, but they are not even moving onto the lanes to collect them. Instead, they immediately focus on the boss at the top. They have the timing window, and they use it. 16 is now ready for them as well. Unyielding despair, crushing hope, amazing talents if you have Entomb, because you're more or less guaranteed to get the entire drain hope duration through. For Karazim, it's going to be super important right now that he can finally use the circle of life here. The Web Weaver wave for the blue team is descending, but the boss is already up at the top lane. Caffeine is keeping himself alive. Deo, Deo trying to get away. Glorang is there. Nice move by Go, trying to just lock them down long enough. Caffeine is about to explode, but ETC is also falling. It's a kill for a kill, and the boss is wreaking havoc at the front line. That's the moment when we even see Chen just use his ult to escape here. We have both teams now closing in on 16. Denial Esports is a bit faster. They had it already in that last engagement. With the flowing wounds, and we're gonna... We have a full scythe build, more or less, for Azul right now. And especially later on in the game, it's gonna make it very difficult for Rega to get his healing through. Once that we have the mortal wound on 20, Zul is going to be even more scary. At this point, it's also the Mutalist that we have. So you have the Mutalisk after protecting coding and Leoric, Mirror Ball even on Liming. Talent not taken yet for Chen. I would expect a pressure point in this case to try and lock down a hero like Sagara even more and try to just like put the pressure additional pressure onto her. But so far McIntyre hasn't really made his choice yet. Now we still have a potential turn in on the side of denial. Not quite, they need like another five, but they are getting closer and closer. And with them denying a lot of the gems to McIntyre a bit earlier, there's still 37 that they hold. But of course, both teams have the exact same amount of web weavers on the map. And if you look at the structures on the mini map, you pretty much know who has won that battle so far. Fury of the Sunwell is now there too. That makes it a lot harder for the team. That it, the poke is just better right now. It's so much poke for Vox and Nihili. We have also the Starwood Spear taken. And Chen went into the pressure point, as expected. All right. So Kalthas is going to try and get that damage in with that poke. Fury of the Sunwell is going to help him a lot with it. Still the lead in experience on the side of Denial. And we have with Mona, of course, another tool that can be used also to uh, maybe isolate someone in the backline before they burst someone away. Right now, turn in potential again on the side of Denial. They need six more gems and then they have another Web Weaver wave. Not a single fort has fallen. Not one on the side of the red team. At this point, we're just like seeing both teams... Basically, it's mostly Vox Nihili right now trying to deny the turn. I mean, both teams, of course, very eager to make sure that there's not another Web Weaver wave, but with 51 gems and not a single one turned in on the side of Vox Nihili, denial doesn't really have to be too afraid just yet. They're, of course, going to attempt and poke and make sure that nothing happens there, but right now, the things are like the situation is starting to turn because we have a camp that was just now taken by Zul, and with that pressure in the mid lane is increasing, and that allows a potential turn in. 
They can try and go up in the middle. Yeah, so Hosty already eating a lot of damage thanks to iDream just poking away with his Liming. Kafi attempting to turn in again. Zagara moving over now too. ETC is in trouble. There's the seven sided strike to the face, and they're going for him. Ancestral is there in time though. McIntyre on the heels of iDream has to go straight in with his barrel, but King Caffeine is not trapped. He's moving away immediately, using, of course, once again, his Red Fork. So a huge commitment here on both sides. Three heroic abilities are on cooldown, but that opens up a turn and opportunity for King Caffeine. The mid lane wave was pushing back, and there's the Red Web Weavers right now. And that has to be a keep for them. They need to try and push for keep. Denial is going to attempt to push for the keep at this point. Caffeine just like waiting with the rest of his boys for the Web Weavers to come down. They are going to try and burst a few of these waves away to get a better starting position for the Web Weavers. Especially Zul is currently doing that at the bot lane, collecting a few gems in the process. In the mid lane, on the other hand, the engagement is already happening. The dream scenario for Vox and Heli is, of course, to get a kill right now, but here's again the Bone Prison. Uh, and stressed, uh, sorry, Rega already using his own cleanse, has to drop the cooldown. And this is actually like a really bad exchange in cooldowns. McIntyre is running straight into the seven side. A great move on the side of APM. That was a perfect opportunity here for him and he used it. Deu is also falling. It's a brutal double kill against Vox Nihili just as the Web Weavers are on those keeps. Caffeine is moving in with a B step here even for a moment. Caffeine might fall. He's definitely going to fall if... Uh, yeah, there's no cooldown at this point on the side of APM. Caffeine is down. I don't really think that he cares because look how close 20 is for them now. Skeletons are in the place now. Zul dropping his ult. They're starting to go for the keep. Lunara up at the top lane is trying to at least defend the second one. She might be able to just barely pull it off, but it doesn't really look likely. Already Lex Uther is moving in to uh, help out, to lend a hand. The mid lane keep is eliminated. Goat is there, super low. Caffeine was actually thinking about following him a little bit longer, but decides against it. Moves back now. Two keeps gone. Level 20 talents in the hands of Denial. They are looking strong here. There's the Mortal Wound, the Spectral Leech, the Transgression, brutal talents against this. Like all the engagements that we saw ending in favor of Denial Esports are now much easier to win for them because they can limit the heal amount on the side of Rega's Ancestral Healing. They have the additional sustain on the side of Leoric. We're seeing even more pressure against the tanks if they start to jump in thanks to the seven side. A repulsion taken now too. This is a fantastic situation on the side of uh, Denial. The one thing that Vox Nihili needs to make happen right now is they need to get a turn in. They need to get a turn in, ideally a decent mosh pit. If they can get a good mosh pit, including, of course, that Li Ming with the interrupt, ideally Zagar of the Maw, then they might be able to turn this around. But 20 is just important for them. When it comes to the damage output, you can already tell that Li Ming is currently just like taking uh, the main damage from the team. The entire time I dream had great positioning uh, on, with his flanks. And there again, the attempt to go for it. Nice move by McIntyre. That was perfect played. Used the catapult here to just jump out of the entomb. Was good pressure against him. If that catapult isn't there, he's dead. Karazim would move in and immediately pull that seven sided, pull that transgression. They are still struggling here. And just the threat of boss to be taken is enough to force them into these fights over and over again. And during all the time, the bot lane is getting massive value thanks to those two siege giants. The next keep is going to be lost, and the bot lane keep is in these situations the most important one because it's the one that is the farthest away from the boss. So you always have to make that choice. Do you move to the bot lane to defend your core since the keep is falling now, or do you defend the boss? And and you can't do both. They are running against the clock and it's not gonna work in their favor. 20 versus 20 at some point. Vox Nihili will have to make a move right now. They're trying to do that. They're trying to go for Caffeine. They can't take him down just yet. And they move back once more. They have the gem count, but they can't turn in. McIntyre is eating the damage as Caffeine is dropping another Drain Hope on him. Bot lane is being pressured hard. They need to move back. Someone need to defend that core, but they can't really afford to do so because if they do, the boss is open. Here comes again the pressure play. Once more, look at that bot lane. Bot lane is getting completely pushed in the entire time, and they're trying to retreat now. Hosty is there. He needs to make sure that uh, like he's the one who's actually trying to pull it off right now because he's so low too. That allows now once again Denial to just try and move in to either go for boss or maybe force a fight here. And this is just going to continue for the rest of the game. For the rest of the game, you're going to see a fight around the boss, whereas we are going to have Voxley Healy move back with individual heroes over and over again. 
I have absolutely no clue whatsoever what Li Ming was doing there. She didn't get barreled. I have no clue what I Dream was doing in this spot. Like, none whatsoever. Everybody else is up at the top and Li Ming dies without getting barreled. Nobody really pushed her out of position. Now the blue web weavers are descending. I Dream definitely hasn't thrown the game just now, but he just allowed Vox Nihili to get a massive... Yeah, to get at least a bit of relief. Because at this point, we're actually... Kafi. Ooh. All right, so Denial is actually starting to throw this a little bit. There are still forts, of course, on the map, so it's not going to end the game right now or anything, but those web weavers are going to deep push the lanes a bit and give them breathing room. With all of the keeps already lost, the web weavers in the middle and at the bottom are not going to really do anything. But up here to the top, there is going to be a ton of pressure against the keep itself. So right now, they need to wait until the two heroes are back. I Dream has played a fantastic game up to the point where he just, like, died randomly on the map for a moment. For now, though, they are going through that lane up to the top. King of Fiend is going to be back in a second. Li Ming is already bare back to business. Maybe he can try and get another Entomb over there. He has another five seconds, but the core is being attacked again. Just look at that mid lane. Thanks to the cam that was taken earlier by Zul, the core is under heavy pressure. Dehu, he just barely blinks out of there and then gets healed by Rhaegar. But did you see how little that Ancestral actually did? And that's because of the mortal wound. Ancestral came in and it nearly didn't do anything. Lunara taken down, the core attacked, and this is going to be the end. The catapults alone. Winions for the win. Kalthas falling now too. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is game one in the best of three series as Denial Esports takes the lead in the semifinal at the NA Regional Qualifier. All right, game number two starts with an Illidan ban. Vox Nihili, they look at Curse Tall and they're immediately saying, you know what, like Illidan is out. No Illidan for Denial, and we have instead a Greymane apparently as the first pick here. The King of Curse, Tolo, aka Falstad, is still being picked here. Zagara, on the other hand, currently banned out. So, a pretty high priority actually to ban Zagara out, but on this map, maybe they have a bit of like bad experience screaming against Vox Nihili with that particular hero. I mean, at that point right now, Zagara, she can still like pressure lanes quite nicely. The Maw is going to give you a lot of value on this map. You can even play again, of course, with the uh, Nidus network. But we have for Denial that combo with Greymane Liming. We've been talking about it a bit earlier. It's just basically like the idea that Greymane can engage together with the rest of the team and try and get kills, get the resets for Liming, and she's just like completely wrecking from the backline while Greymane in Wargen form is just going backline and balls deep and tries to take him down. So a hero that we're either going to see picked or banned by Vox Nihili is probably going to be Tyrael. If you play a Greymane, that's one of the heroes that you are trying to grab. But Vox Nihili, of course, knows that too, so they are most likely going to try and get rid of that one way or another. They themselves have false start, which is definitely a good start here for them. They are likely to go into an ETC again if the past few games were any indication here. I would really like them to play maybe like a double, a double warrior setup. You have to keep in mind that they have already Liming against them, so that wave of force is going to become a little bit of an issue, I suppose. But in this case, I really feel if they don't go for an ETC, there's a high chance that Denial is going to pick him up. And all of a sudden, you're looking at two frontliners already that Denial could play, Tyrael and ETC, that would both be pretty solid for them. Now, Vox Nihili, first of all, with a Thrall. If they decide to let that ETC slide and ban out a Tyrael, or like pick Tyrael, or not pick Tyrael here, then uh, there is a chance that they at least have a decent interrupt against the Marsh Pit. But that alone is going to give them a very good top laner now too. So they can uh, play Thrall in the solo lane. And he has, of course, also like quite a bit of momentum in these cases. Johanna would be a bit weird. I would, like, that Tyrion would make a lot more sense. First of all, you uh, can play him with Thrall. Second of all, you pick him away from Greymane so you don't have to ban him. So you get double value out of him. You have a great tank for your own setup, and at the same time, you're also denying your opponent here that they want. So, they decide in favor of Tyrael. So, no Johanna taken. Denial, on the other hand, they are going to ban out now, and we could see a ban on uh, supports. Vox Nihili has no support just yet. Denial has the next double pick, so in theory, they can just simply try and grab their own support now, ban one out. But they are apparently a little bit afraid of that wailing arrow with that silence. 
it's all about allowing Greymane to really just like go deep and do a whole lot. Now, keep in mind, when we're talking about potential bans on the side of Vox Nihili, another hero that we have to consider is Abathur. Abathur together with Greymane is oftentimes played because you get the Greymane copy and have a double Abathur all of a sudden. And Abathur can also like uh, soak experience while the fight is happening around the tribute. If you have a falsehood against you, you always have to be a little bit careful with your positioning on the lane in those bushes because falsehood can just simply fly in and try and take you down. But that's definitely a hero that Vox Nihidi is at least thinking about. They don't necessarily have to go for ban, but you can see that they kind of agree with the assessment. They ban out Abathur because they say, like, together with Greyman, it's just, like, too much. Muradin already about to be taken for denial. Now, if they take Muradin, that would be a very solid hero that has a lot of sustain. They can still go into a double front line. They might want to go into something like a Sony. There's a couple of options here. They go into a Muradin. Muradin Sonya is definitely like a, an option. They can go also into uh, potentially uh, an, a Muradin. Uh, sorry, uh, an Arthas or an ETC. Uther already taken for them. And they leave the last pick open. I kind of like that. Uther is going to try and enable Greymane to go deep. But at this point, they can still try and go into maybe even something like uh, a double support combo. We have seen Uther together with the Tacita. Depends a little bit on what Vox Nihili plays right now. So Vox Nihili, first of all, with the Rhaegar. That's already solid for them. Now they have to think about how are we going to get that damage in. For example, let's just assume for a moment they're going to go into, let's say, Lunara. All of a sudden, you have so much damage output and damage over time against you that an Uther might not really cut it anymore. Then you can go into the Tacita and you have a double support. So you are flexible with that last pick, leaving that open. And if your opponent is just going for an additional damage dealer or frontliner, you can just like simply move in and get damage f or get either a damage hero or you get another like, tank to adjust the situation. So I really like the way that Denial has kept their options open here. Vox Nihili has already with Tyrell and Thrall a very solid frontline here. Damage output would be great for them. That can be a Vala if you're not really confident in having something along the lines of a Jaina or a Kel'thas, a.k.a. a Mage in the back line. So Vala with the auto attack damage can also put incredible pressure on Muradin. And keep in mind that a lot of these fights are in close quarters, right? So a Reign of Vengeance would be absolutely fantastic here. Zeratul as a pick can again just like try and isolate the back line with a good Void Prison. And it's going to put the pressure onto Vala and False Dead. So that could also have an impact on Vala's build right now. Depend like if you go up against a lot of melee assassins, Vala players occasionally will go into an arrow build since it gives you a little bit more sustain. The normal build these days is still a hybrid between going into composite arrows on one and then auto attack talents. And then on level 13 you kind of decide if you can afford to go into the frost shot or if you have to go into something like a spell shield for example. But against the Zara tool, there could even be an arrow build being played because it allows you, with the double arrow then later, to first of all survive a little bit longer against the melee assassin, but also get that single target damage in if you fight outside of the lane. So it's going to be interesting to see how exactly that's going to happen there. It's a very strong setup for Denial for sure. That Void Prison needs to get value. They can buy time to get a boss maybe, or even like get a curse, depending on how they run it here. So yeah. It's a definitely an interesting setup for both teams. I'm liking a lot what Denial is doing here. They're very aggressive with the setup. Uther has to be on point with the Divine Shield when they start to go in. Curse Tolo, it is the second map. It could be a 2 0 for Denial. Vox Nihili has a solid setup themselves here with the Tyrell Thrall at the front line, but they need good engagements. And let's find out together if they can make it happen and if they can force map number three. Game number two, everybody, and we have Vox Nihili going up again against Denial Esports. And, well, this is the second game, meaning that if Denial Esports takes and claims victory here, we have them with a 2-0 yeah, victory over their opponent and therefore qualified for the regional final. So we're going to find out if that's going to be a thing or not. To the left side already, it's Vox Nihili with Deu on Tyriel. We have Goat on Vala, McIntyre on Thrall, Hossi on Falstead, and Lex Uther on Rhaegar. To the right side of the map, Kefin, the man himself on Murden. I dream on Greymane this time. K1 Pro on Li Ming. That alone is just such a brutal comp. APM on Uther, and we have Glorang uh, playing a Zeratul. Now, this is a very scary setup that Denial Esports is running in this game right now. I'm personally a little bit curious to see how exactly that's going to work out for them, because, well, let's just say that there is at least the potential for the blue team to uh, snowball those fights with a good sanctification. But you really need to have a perfect setup to make really sure that you get the most value out of that Tyrael and also that Thrall, of course. 
Right now, there is the arrow build, as already expected. So as a like as an answer to going up against Greymane plus Zero Tool, arrow build chosen right now for Vala. It kind of makes sense. A bit of a counter play here, yeah, yeah. They were trying to trap, but it was a very nice trap here at the top with only one hero showing and two hiding in the bush. So in this case, they don't get a kill, but they get a lot of free damage in against the opponent. So I actually like that here quite a bit. Besides that, in terms of talents, we have now also the Even in Death taken for Tyrael. We have Zeratul again with the Regeneration Master. Wolfheart for Greymane. We have the Force Armor for Liming. But overall, a really cool setup. I'm liking that Vala adjustment a lot, I have to say. Ooh, Greymane actually taken out. Apparently at the bot lane here, McIntyre nearly paying the price and falling himself, but they get the kill in. So a quick fly in and then the kill against Greymane. And that is, of course, pretty sweet for them. They don't really get a lot out of it in the sense of experience. I mean, it's putting pressure on the opponent. It takes a little bit away of the ability to rotate on the map. But APM already moved in to make sure that he takes over the experience here. And it's just making uh, certain that they're not losing out on too much. But it's a slightly different experience that we see now for Vox Nihili. Nothing too crazy just yet, though. That being said, both of the teams have to now think about their... Li oh, there we go. Trying to go for McIntyre. Not going to happen here, though. Both of them have to think about the Siege Giants, because we are nearly two minutes in, Siege Giant camps are now spawning, and Rhaegar is immediately starting to take this one over. So he just jumps in, starts to take it. Greymane could rotate back and claim their own Siege Giants. The big deal with the Siege Giants is that you are able to uh, gain a tribute more or less for free if you're lucky with a tribute spawn. Siege Giants are going to push the blue, uh, the top lane for the blue team, bot lane for the red team. Depending on where the tribute spawns, your opponent will have to leave one hero behind to de-push, and therefore you can, can get a free tribute or at least some pressure play. Vala, puncturing arrow, siphoning arrow, repeating arrow is going to be the talent on um, level 7. And then the question just remains, how, are, how is the heroic ability coming to play? Personally, I would love a Reign of Vengeance there, but we'll see. Fawcett, by the way, is going for the Static Shield, a defensive talent against Greymane Zeratul. Bot lane pressure, thanks to Zeratul and the camp. So it's a 4 versus 4 fight up here at the top. Nobody's rotating. Fawcett is starting to fly in. And that's actually an interesting fly. Fawcett wants to make sure that they can take this one immediately, but the camp at the bot lane is going to get value. The longer this now lasts, the worse for Vox Nihili. Denial Esports is going to try, and no pun intended, to deny this for as long as they possibly can. And this camp is going to get value at the bot lane, and quite a lot of it at that. So yes, this is a run against the time. Already Warble Blades being chosen, Caffeine jumping out, nice, Glorang as well. And they still hold this. This is the worst case scenario. Not only do they not get the tribute, they lose so much down to the bot lane. Just look at this setup right now. Time is working against them. The Siege Giants are giving massive value to the red team. It's a great situation right now for Denial Esports. And those Siege Giants already going for the, for the first tower. There's a lot that will fall here for sure. Up at the top lane on the other hand, we're still seeing Caffeine jumping in, getting healed, jumping out. APM on the other hand, and maybe a little bit far out. Hosey is trying to go for him. Zeratul even moved into the middle of the lane for a moment. They're jumping in again. Greymane with the aggression here. Trying to get a kill isolated from the rest of the team now, though. Gets still healed and is able to move away. What? The kill against Muradin, though, and it's a double kill, and that makes it worth it again. They get a double kill. Glorang, on the other hand, at least a counter kill against Teriel, who still explodes right into his face, but he's still able to move away. Triple kill as Uther also die. It's a 3 for 2, though. Vala and Teriel both were eliminated. Down here to the bot lane. One tower down. Second one being attacked right now. Waves pushing in. Early level 7 for Denial. Two versus four kills overall, and the tribute still ending up in the hands of Vox Nihili. Overall, still an okay trade for Vox Nihili. Wasn't too bad with them killing three heroes. They got a lot of experience. Here's now the repeating arrow. We're seeing follow through taken. We have Boomerang together with the Gathering Storm, having the synergy between the two talents. And by now, Falls are taking the XP at the bot lane, but they lost the wall here. So the camp definitely gave value, but we still have the tribute won by the blue team. If they would have lost it, it would have been a disaster, but they are able to make that work. Calamity now in 7. We're seeing also the Iron Forged momentum after the Thunderburn. Now keep in mind one of the main reasons why you're actually going for this build is that the Thunderburn is going to apply the healing static twice later on, once you have level 13. 
and you have the Iron Forge momentum to reduce the cooldown on your Thunderclap even more. So you're just trying to stand in the middle of four to five heroes and just clap, clap, clap the entire time to keep yourself alive and have to sustain. Follow through now. They're still seeing Uther not with the team. That means they have no sustain up here, and McIntyre chance the second one. Vox Nihili is putting the pressure on. They're already in possession of two tributes, meaning that they are able to get a curse later on. Yeah, Hosty is in a bit of trouble. Should be able to barrel roll away if need be. Holding that for a long time. And Muradin is falling. Kefi kind of blanking here a little bit. Staying too late and then not able to escape here. Hosty, I mean, this guy has the balls of steel. Zeratul is on him, nearly dropping in. And he's just not barrel rolling. He's just like standing there. It's so like, no, you're, you can't kill me. You, you just can't. My allies are coming in. I'm just going to hold that barrel roll for now. I can still use that if need be. There's nobody to stun me out of it. So I'm just going to wait for a moment. Gold on this Vala is doing so far quite solid work. Keep in mind that this arrow build is of course shining once that he's fighting outside of the lane because he's more or less guaranteed that every single one of his shots is going to hit a hero. There's no Zagara with Banelings, uh, sorry, with like Roaches or Hydras. There's no Anubarak with Beetles. So that arrow build is going to get the hits. In. Uh, up to the top lane. We're currently seeing Siege Giants again. Uh, Hosty and McIntyre are already there, trying to help out and push in with that. But the deep push is happening as K1 Pro and Kefina committing to it. Down to the bottom of the map, on the other hand, Vala is in a bit of trouble for just one moment. And yeah, this should be a tribute in favor of Denial Esports. 10 versus 10. Abilities are there. Vala hasn't chosen yet. She goes strafe. No Reign of Vengeance for her. Trying to rely on the strafe for now. And let's see how this is going to work out for them. Heroic abilities, all chosen. Here comes the bubble in the back line. Yep, Void Prison is down. Glorang needed to use it to disengage. K1 Pro attempting to capitalize on it with another comp. If they move away from this one, they're going to get cursed. But the well is still there, and that can tap. This is one of the big reasons why we are currently seeing a bit of a lead in this fight, actually. Nice move, K1. And I dream they get the kills. Interior is down. Resets for Li Ming. Divine Shield on I dream. Caffeine goes deep. And they get another kill against McIntyre. Wow. Very well done here. Goat can't tap the well because it gets destroyed. And they immediately jump on the boss. They have a bit of an opportunity here. And with five heroes, they just move in. Falstead doesn't have the Mighty Gust anymore. He's not a threat. The rest of the team is dead. And they just take it. Barely in time, but indeed they do. Very well done here. Hosty is back, but it's too late. That was perfect timing on the side of Denial. I really like the decision making here. But now, of course, they still have to grab that tribute. It was a bit of a risk. Goat is not interrupting. Great. That's the, this is the best case scenario for the Night Esports. It can't get any better than that. If that's an interrupt, if Vala is just a little bit farther forward and is able to interrupt the tribute, it could be a fight over the tribute and a potential curse. But now, of course, the boss, he goes through the bot lane. It's very early on, so it didn't really do too much just yet. Took down at least like one of the towers, is starting to also like bind them to the bot lane that allows for another opportunity to take boss number two, and that's what they're doing right now. Falstead has Mighty Gust back up, but he can't just simply fly up top and try to steal it away, especially since Uther, of course, has his cleanse ready for this uh, opportunity too. And yeah, they're going for it. Boss is going to be taken, they're even attempting to put some pressure onto McIntyre here. So, boss and boss claim. Great moves by Denial. It's very good decision making that they currently have here. But we still see Vox Nihili in a situation in which they can get the curse. And that's a very good spawn for them down at the bottom of the map. They can zone with the rest of their heroes, but it would mean that the boss is able to just like wreak havoc up at the top lane. And the boss is going to destroy the fort if they let that happen. The teams are very close in experience. I Dream is starting to move in. Lot of damage. Lies locked down. And there's the stun. Great claim here with the Sundering. Locking him down. The curse is there. Goat already going for the strafe. Not really getting too much value just yet. Here's the Void Prison. They go for APM, but they can't kill him yet. Great play, though. I Dream was too aggressive. He really wanted to deny the curse and he went in deep but Vala with a very nice arrow getting full value out of it and then afterwards the stuns are just hitting Greyman in the Sundering, capitalizing on his positioning and taking him down. The boss still getting some value up at the top but of course it's not going to get too much here and the curse on the other hand is now also allowing uh, Vox Nihili to help at their level 13 talent. Both of the teams fighting a very, very good battle here. Again the attempt! Nice Ancestral! Divine Shield was already great in perfect timing. A sanctification on the ground. Already everybody pushed into the back lane. Thanks to the Mighty Gas. They go for APM, but they can't. They secure the kill just barely. They get it. 
and already a four versus five and still the lanes being pushed. The four at the bot lane has just fallen. The lead and experience all of a sudden in favor of the blue team. They're going to the top with Hosty obliterating another wave to his boomerang. Well played, well done. Rega with the earth shield here. And that's a really important talent. Now guys, we're talking oftentimes about talent adjustments, and it's really important to make those. In this case, Rega had basically the choice between the tidal waves for the cooldown reduction and him simply going for the Earth Shield. And with this setup that is being run now by Denial Esports, his reasoning is quite simple here. If he can spam out the tidal, well, the he chain heal a little bit more often, that's nice and uh, well, but the problem is there is not too much AoE. There's a bit of AoE damage on the opponent's side. There's no like Kel'thas or anything together with like maybe even, I don't know, like a Tyranna for Starfall plus Phoenix combo. He needs to keep the burst target alive. Greymane and Zeratul are going to try and uh, go into a target with the help of Li Ming, and as long as he can drop that Earth Shield and then afterwards the Ancestral Healing, he is in a situation where he can keep a target alive, and that is crucial. It's crucial for the team fight. Make sure that the Burst does not kill Vala, that he doesn't kill False Dead, and you are good to go. Right now, Vox Nihili is playing a great game. They have 7 versus 5 kills, and it's actually a fantastic game that we're seeing right now. Both teams make great decisions. That boss into Tribute, into boss that we saw earlier by uh, the Nile Esports was extremely well played. And now Vox Nihili is just countering with a great curse that they had. Good team fighting, and I'm really liking the way that they are currently running the show here. But they are so close in experience right now. Both of the teams are. I mean, in this situation, we are just like seeing them fighting for every single inch of the map, and I'm absolutely loving it. At this point, we're having 26,000 damage on the side of Li Ming. We're seeing a 27,000 for Thrall. Vala is at solid 24k, and uh, Falstead on 20,000. But both teams, of course, now aiming for level 16. Also, keep the bosses in mind. 36 seconds, and up at the top lane, it's a minute and a half. Deep pushing the lanes is crucial, trying to get a bit more experience. In terms of structures, it's still a very close match. I mean, right now we have still one fort in the mid lane on the side of Mox and Healy. There's another fort up at the top lane on the other hand that we are seeing for Denial. So from a structural point of view, they are more or less on the same level. And they're actually like looking really strong here, like both teams do. But the 16 is going to hit a little bit earlier for the red team. Fossil is trying to change that. He's soaking the top lane right now. They're poking with Thrall. McIntyre just drawing out the chain lightning and Goat also capitalizing on his multi-shot. But I Dream is channeling again. They have the 16 talent now already. Give him the axe for Meriden. Mirror ball taken. Benediction. We see the rending cleave. No 16 yet for the blue team. They need to poke a little bit and there it is. Even talents. All of a sudden, Flowrider, Erigus, the combo is there. We have also, finally, a holy ground, Vala with a blood for blood, and they're starting to go straight for Caffeine. Caffeine being attacked here. Already we're seeing Tyrael not going for the sanctification just yet, but he's trying to jump in. He gets healed as he's being stunned. K1 Pro with the channel, but he's interrupted. Eldruin Smite is already on there. They're starting to jump in. Where's the sanctification? Not being used just yet. Instead, they're going for Greymane right now after Sundering. Already Void Prison being used. APM blown away, but doesn't do anything. No, Tyrael is falling. Could use the even in death and indeed does so. I dream is still alive though. I don't know how and why, but he is still there. APM is falling. It's a four versus four. Of course, that Uther Ghost can still drop those heals, and that's exactly what he does. Caffeine is low, so is Goat. They don't have mana anymore. Uther is finally dead. Look at that shot at McIntyre. K1 Pro with a reset, and Host is about to die now, too. Caffeine going in, mana, no mana. He doesn't care. It's a 4 4 2, and Denial Esports is claiming another tribute. Drops not only Vala, but also looking at a potential kill versus Rekha. <laughs> what a play! Everybody running low on mana in this situation and they just go for full on fight and Li Ming K1 Pro with that damage output blowing everything straight onto Thrall. He is obliterated. Doesn't stand a chance there. And this could have like turned so fast. I dream after we just saw that explosion of Tyrael nearly died. He nearly died, like a little bit more damage, and I Dream is dead, but he survives it. And then with a kill on Uther, he has such a low cooldown on his heals that he could simply just start to heal up the entire team. Now there's a boss taken, and guys, it is the perfect situation for Denial Esports. It doesn't get any better than this. Just look at that bot lane. 
There it is, the Curse Tribute. The boss at the top. You're in a checkmate position right now. What do you do? There's a boss to be taken by your opponent. There's a Curse Tribute as well. You have to defend against the boss up at the top lane so that you don't lose the key. Posty is standing there a little bit longer. Uther's already at it. Bam, there's a Curse. And right now they're trying to go for the boss. And if Forster just doesn't stay at the top lane in defense, then they are going to lose the keep for sure. All right, now the heal is too late. And Tyriel is dead. Even with the Earth Shield, even with that immediate move onto the Ancestral, he is down. Denial Esports is getting closer and closer to qualifying for the regional qualifier here. Top lane pressure against the keep. They're taking it down. This is the moment when you have to cut your losses. You need to move back with the knowledge that there's going to be a boss against you. You have to defend the bot lane. They at least defended the keep up here, but Glorang, I Dream, and Kafina already jumping onto it. They are trying to take down these structures. The boss at the bot lane is going to give them solid value. They're even moving in towards the bot lane now together with the rest of the team to make sure that they get the key. And they should. 16 seconds on that curse. It's a 5 versus 5 again. Maybe with a perfect sanctification they can make a play here, but it's not going to be easy. That boss is doing solid work. And they are just like poking away as is already. Two seconds, Curse is gonna stop, but the boss is already on the keep, and this should be it. They're trying to go for Caffeine though, and Caffeine nearly falling. There's the Void Prison, decent isolation. Again, Tyriel is down, and they are just like trying to get some value. At least the damage against Glorung, but they have to give this one up. They don't have a strong frontline tank. Tyriel is good, but he is not in this case. What they need to have a sustainable fight. There's the Divine Shield on Greymane, and McIntyre is dead. Are they going for it? They are going for it. They are trying to jump on. They have level 20s right now. They have the boss on the core. They are dropping false set. This is game, ladies and gentlemen. This is the qualification of Team Denial Esports. They make it happen. They are able to take down Vox Nihili with a 2-0 victory, and they qualify for the regional final in North America. The second one, they maintain a chance to qualify for Gamescom. For BlizzCon, my bad. Well played, GG, and well done.